Daddy. Uh huh. I sure will. Uh, good morning, everybody. You're listening to the voice. Come on, dig me now. One and only. Steve Harvey got a radio show. Man, if 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 I had time enough to tell the whole trip, the whole journey, then y'all would be sitting up in there going, "Okay, Steve, are we gonna play the show this week?" But man, it's been a a, a lot of amazing things has has uh, happened to me over the years, um, and and not all of them good. It's been some amazingly bad things that have happened too. But I just come on in the morning as a reminder to everybody of the, of of the actual goodness of God. That you know, man, that these mistakes that you're making, that these setbacks that you keep having, that these falls that keep occurring in your life, that they all are leading you somewhere if you just don't ever give up. That's the key. You can never ever give up because you don't know how the trip has been laid out for you. You know, if somebody had have told me years ago when I had the dream of being on TV and then I thought about being a, one, of, um, one of the best comedians I could be, you know, when, when, I, when I started, if somebody had have told me everything that was going to have to happen in order for me to get there, I would have changed it. I would have. I would have said, okay, well, I ain't going to be that. How about this? See, and and no one can know all of the events of their life ahead of time. You know, it would be so nice, wouldn't it, you know, to prepare for it, see it coming, be aware of the haters, always knowing when the backstabbing moment is coming in your life, always knowing when you're going to get blindsided by the enemy. It would be really great to know that, wouldn't it? Well, that's not how it works. So, since no one knows exactly the challenges and the pitfalls and the detours that's going to beset them, it's 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 imperative that you just don't give up. Because, see, knowing these things, we as human beings, by nature, would choose another route. But it ain't the route God got for you, though. See the route God got for you. If you if you trying to do the right thing, if you doing the best you can, if you ain't out here just intentionally just messing over folks, if you using faith and that's the belief in things that you cannot see, if you have something on the inside of you to keep saying there's got to be more to life than that, then that's that's you. You, my friend, have a great chance here. And if you've ever had that feeling and gave up on it, just get it back. Just ask for it back. Just say, hey, man, I'm getting back to the way I used to be. Because there's a change that's available in your life. But you got to take it. You got to take a shot at it, folks. There's a chance for you to get it right. But you got to take a shot at it, folks. There's a chance for you to turn this whole thing around with God's help. But you got to take a shot at it. You. See, this decision is yours. The decision to lay down and give up, that's yours. It ain't it just got too hard for me, life too much. Man, life hard and too much for everybody. What I got to get you to see, my father used to always tell me, he said, son, best lessons in life, the one you'll value and learn the most is a bought lesson. I didn't quite understand that being young, but I sure got it now. Ain't no lesson like a bought lesson, the one you pay for. Those are the ones that hold to you, that stick to you, that 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 start turning you into who you're going to be. Those are the character builders. See, um, you got to be forged to get to where you want to go in life. See, that's what the challenges and missteps is for. That's what the failing is about. Now, I know you don't like it. I didn't. I know you're not comfortable with it. I wouldn't. I know you wish it was over sooner than later. I always do. I always want it to be over sooner than later because the later, man, it just seems like it's so much I got to go through. But let me tell you something, man. If you can, if you can forge your way through it and understand that you are forged in life. I don't know. I was on TBN one time when I was doing one of my motivational uh, speeches and I began to wonder about this experience I had at Ford Motor Company and, um, 
my last job after the auto industry started going down, my last job was in the foundry. And my job was to stand at the end almost where the uh, engines first come out of the furnace. See, the engines are poured into a mold, a hot, melted down metal, whatever they call it, lava, whatever. They pour it into a mold, and it goes into this furnace that's extremely hot. And my job was, after the heat was applied to the engine block, it would come through. And it, it would go through a hardening stage, but the way it was hardening, they would cool it suddenly. They would flush it with water. It would just blast water on it. But the fire and the high temperature is what made the engine block solidify. It's because it's got to get real hot, get melted down first. Then it's got to get poured into a mold. Then it's got to be pressure hit with water and all of this. And then it, and it's real hot now. It's still hot, even though there's water been shot up. But when it comes out the end of the side, there's a lot of flashing in it. The flashing is metal from that to drip through the cast uh, molding on it, just like flecks of extra pieces of metal. My job was to hit this engine block in the front with this huge, heavy rubber mallet knock all the flashing off the front, and when it came around back, to bam, hit it real hard again on the backside. And that became the core of what the car is. A car without a great engine is nothing. It's just a pretty looking vehicle over there. But if it can't do what it was made to do because the engine block then crack. See, you can have a car look real good, but if it freezes, an engine block crack, you, your car, you could, it's, it's over, man. You got to get a new block. The block is the core. But in order for you, for the car to do what it's got to do, it's got to have a strong engine in it. In order for the engine to be strong, it's got to be forged in steel, come through fire, get poured in a mold, cooled off, heated, knocked around, beat on the front end, beat on the back end in order for it to be what it's going to be. The moral of the story, folks, is you got to get forged in fire to be what you're going to be. You got to get beat up. You got to get pressure washed. You got to have heat on you. You got to get melted down. You got to get poured into a mold. That's how you become who you are. So the tough things that you're going through, the difficult challenges and the setbacks. I know a brother who went to prison, man, and and the whole reason he ended up going to prison because he was looking out the window, looking out in the yard at him working out. And then the next thing you know, man, this brother decided that he was going to go out there and work out. Well, guess what? He's one of the top trainers in country today. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Between April 1971 and September 1972, six young black girls were snatched off the streets in Washington, D.C. It took four murders before the police finally realized that one person was responsible. I will admit the others when you catch me, if you can. Sign, Freeway Phantom. This child was uh, laying on the side of the road. It appeared that she was probably either dragged out of the car or thrown out of the car. The person said, I murdered your daughter. The killer believed that he may have been seen by the mother. Did my mother see me? That guy is, he's out of sync with even the worst people. I thought that they would catch him. I thought it was just a matter of time. Is it possible that the killer is still alive? Listen to Freeway Phantom on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. Ladies and gentlemen, it is upon us. A new day. Another moment in time. Today's a new day. But when you look at it like this, though, it ain't number God just doing what he do. Who else can make a brand new day? Tell me, who do that? Nobody. I was having a discussion the other day, and this man came in the room and said, for all of you believers, suppose there is no God. You know what I did? Mm. I just walked out the room. Yes. Yeah. No, yes, I, I, I ain't got no time for this discussion you finna have. Because you're not finna convince me no other way. I don't know why he thought he was starting. A lot of people gathered around him, started having this debate. I walked out the room. I'm gone. I'm gone. And you know where I went? Hmm. Fishing. Where? 
Mm, hello. <laughs> hey, man, I went straight fishing, man. I ain't got time to talk. Well, I don't know what you talking about, man. Go ahead on about your business. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Steve Harvey Morning Show. Shelly Strawberry, Carla Pharrell, the mouth of the South, Mississippi, Monica. Government name is Kill Space, but everybody call him Junior. And the legend that is Nephew Tommy. Ladies and hey, gentlemen, hey. Steve Harvey Morning Show. Hey, Junior. Yes, sir. Dude, what's going on with you today, man? Hey, let me tell you. You've been you having up. no questions lately. You've been making nah, a lot of statements. I'm making another one, Uncle. I'm going to tell you. Did you know there's this new thing coming up because we on our way to Easter? They, you know, I get the kids having an Easter egg hunt, but now they want the adults to have an Easter egg hunt. I'm, I'm too old to walk around and be looking for stuff, first of all, Uncle. Uh, Cause if I go down there and find something, you know what I want to find? I want to find this down payment on this house. That's what I need to go find. I'm not finding no candy. I'm, I'm, I'm 44 years old. Some of y'all out here, if you're going to go on the Easter egg hunt, find something that you need in your life, like a committed relationship. You need to go find that in the Easter egg hunt. There's a lot of things in the Easter egg hunt. Find your damn daddy at this Easter egg hunt. What the hell are we out here? Daddy. Yeah, what the hell are we out here looking for candy for? I'm too grown. Don't send me on no damn Easter egg hunt. You know what? Find something for your arthritis out here in this Easter egg hunt. <laughs> Too damn old be out here looking for candy. Get something that's going to work for you in your life. You know what? Find your next car payment at the Easter egg Ooh. hunt. Everybody yeah. run right here. I'm not coming out here for no candy. You know what else I like to find this Easter egg hunt? Uh, this adult <laughs> Easter egg hunt. I like to find this damn kill for sickle cell at the damn Easter egg hunt. I'll walk around for that. That's what I walk out here for. But I'm not coming out here for no candy. Coming out here. Don't take it as soon as you find it, Junior. <laughs> no, right there in the, right wherever I find it. I don't care. I'm taking it right there. That's, I'm just not doing this. I'm not for this adult Easter egg hunt. It's not. Junior, it's not. Yes, sir. I understand what you're saying. Yeah, you understand. Ask me why I ain't going to the Easter egg hunt. Why you not going to the adult Easter egg hunt? Uh? Cause I got eggs. <laughs> and egg money. <laughs> eggs are Hell, right am now. I going down there for some yeah. eggs? And clearly, I have some. <laughs> Absolutely. I'm not doing it. Mm -mm. <laughs> well, we have learned a lot what you're going to do with yes. this adult Easter egg. I'm <laughs> yeah, not doing all that. Junior's going Walking through. Walking around looking girl. for stuff. <laughs> All right. Coming up in 32 minutes after the hour. Thank you, Junior. We got the pastor and the deacon with church complaints right after this. <laughs> You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. It is Monday, so you know what that means. It is time for church complaints with Reverend Motown <laughs> and Deacon Def Jam. Uh, gavel most pacifiously. As we emdify what the words are about the enunciations of my lips. What happened? Uh -huh. we, uh -huh. uh, as we well, it, electrify, as we enunciations uh -huh. comes from my lips, yeah. we well. biologically what happened? We'll discuss the word in a chronic order. Dr. Dre? Knowing that we will be together in the aftermath. In the aftermath. Yeah. <laughs> we come now come on, with congregational complaints uh -huh. with none other than the vociferous. Mm. Digger Def Jam, come on, come on, Digger. I'm biciferous. I like that. I don't have syphilis. Be careful, you need to speed that up. You said bye and you hung it out there too, <laughs> too long. Mm. Mm. Yeah. 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 Junior, Listen, uh, before I... we get started, Junior, I want one of them baseball hats with <laughs> yes, Kill's sir. Hope on it. <laughs> yes, sir. Oh, yeah. Is yes, them sir. lips in the O? No, no, them, not, them two sickle cells, sir. Oh, oh that's what a sale look like. I didn't oh, know. if them was lips, I was going to say that hat don't make no damn sense. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take it, don't <laughs> Go ahead, Deacon. All right. Uh, Amazon came on Friday, Pastor. Your miracle spring toilet water has arrived. When do you want to start healing people with it? And um, Sister Beatrice wants someone, uh, he wants you to put some on her double jointed hip. 
but your Miracle Spring toilet water has arrived. I just want you to know that. Thank you. I'm so glad I've been waiting on it. It's the latest and greatest uh, latest thing that's out now. Yeah. Miracle yeah. Spring toilet water. It springs forth from a wonderful toilet in Jerusalem. I'm the only one that have access to this toilet in Jerusalem. I would have had stuff. Had them start shipping it out here to me. Lord, it's a wonderful thing. What does this do, Pastor? How, how, people want to know what, how you will use it. On oh, I, I got started getting it bottle bottle because of a guy over there. I heard him say, it had healed the sugar honey iced tea out of him. <laughs> so I said, well, we need to bottle this up and sell it. You know what I'm saying? So it'll be here. Mm. Only one with access to it, Pastor. <laughs> yeah, I'm the only one. I'm not selling the bottles. Just want y'all to know that I'm selling finger sprinkles. Oh, I ain't gonna come to me. I just mm. dabbed in there. Finger sprinkles. <laughs> yeah. That way I uh, keep it economical for you. That ain't but three fifty. <laughs> Why are we still oh, members of this church? Wow. Moving right along, Pastor. Good. Brother Simon says that he is trying to get his life right. He feels that uh, his time is getting near. Uh, he asked, could you come by the house and get the six blockbuster tapes he never returned and drop oh, them off? Uh, he's had them since 1985. I, I told him you might swing by there later on this evening, but it's your call. Though, Pat. But he's just anybody to told life. Brother Silas that he just gonna have to give it, get to heaven and answer for that? Cause <laughs> we don't. It, there is no more blockbuster. That know what it had back to. Amen. Mm -hmm. You've already been charged for this at blockbuster and in heaven. <laughs> Amen mm. again. Mm. Mm. So you can go up there and tell the Lord why you kept them tapes. Because mm. I can't help you at this point. I'm not picking them up. I can't play them. I got nowhere to take them. Mm. Okay. All right. All right. Uh, here's another note. Uh, uh, some of our white members are asking, is it all right when you preaching, if they can say you preaching uh, for sheezy, my kneesy? Uh, they want to know if you don't mind if they say that. So. They just I, didn't, to get I, didn't, I didn't understand what you said. Some of our white members of the church are asking when you are preaching, uh, if it's all right if they say you preaching for she's it, my knees did. They want to know if they can say that. Oh, they've asked. That's fine. As long as they have tied envelopes. <laughs> oh, that's, that's where you draw the line. Yes. We yes. allow that in here. Uh -huh. uh, this, we ain't Fox News. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, we we have song. some some wayward people at this church. Yeah, but as long yeah. as you pay in these tithes, <laughs> you can say preach in if you want to. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's that's say going that. a bit far, there, Pastor. All right, uh, I don't know how to say this. Now, this has nothing to do with you, Pastor, uh -oh. Uh -oh. at all. Uh oh. Nothing to do with you, because this is not you. Now, I need you to get that in your head. This is not you. But we have uh, one of our members, Sister Marjorie Harvey, sent in an emergency prayer request. Ooh. She says her husband has gotten on her last nerves. Oh. She, uh, she won't say who he is. We're not going to talk about who he is, but seems like he's complaining about not being rich enough. And, uh, She's asking that maybe you could possibly pray for him, Pastor, or talk to him. But but that's her request. Well, it's an emergency. I, I appreciate you saying that and everything, but we've researched this letter that came in, uh -huh. and it was written anonymously. It actually came from Sister Jackie Miles. Oh, yeah. Read it now. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. To be continued. Just wanted to break that out there. It was a, We found it on the stationery. She had to try to white it out, there, but stationery clearly said, after we scraped it off, Chateau was on it. <laughs> we, we knew the sauce. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you, Deacon. Coming up next... <laughs>
It is Ask the CLO with our Chief Love Officer, Steve Harvey, in the building. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Coming up at the top of the hour in entertainment news, actor Jonathan Majors was arrested for alleged oh. strangulation, assault, and harassment. A strangulation? Of a, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is terrible. Uh, for strangulation, assault, and harassment of a female, but maintains his innocence. Maintains his innocence. Um, we'll get into that. Uh, Judge Joe Brown threatened Cheryl Lee Ralph with a defamation lawsuit. We'll talk about that. And CeeLo's horse Thank collapsed. Thank you, Mrs. CeeLo's horse collapsed while attempting to make a grand entrance. We'll talk about all of these stories at the top of the hour. But right now, it is time to ask the CLO. CLO, this is from Ariane in KC in Kansas City. Ariane writes, my husband is an extrovert. I'm an introvert. I love to read books and watch movies on the weekend, but I have to be confined to, confined to my room because he's always got friends over. How do I stop him and reclaim our family room on the weekends? Well, then reclaim the family room and he could take his friends in the basement in the backyard. That's all. You can't give up your house because he, and it's okay. And you can't, you knew your husband was an extrovert before you met him. Before mm. you married him. Mm-hmm. He didn't just now start having people over. But you put up with it so you could get the wedding ring. Mm. You got the ring. Hey, man, ain't mm-hmm. no married man can do what the hell he want to do in his house because <laughs> it ain't his. Hell, I don't, what, what, who ain't understanding that? <laughs> I have you to keep ask. talking that is I, boy. I gotta ask everything. I can't bring nobody in there. Yeah. yeah. Can I have company? Yes. No, dog. She bring anybody in there if she want to, but can't nobody stay. <laughs> right. You know, but, I, I I ain't look up nobody stairs. She always asks me that. Even if it's relatives, can they yeah. stay? Go ahead, sure. But no, I was gonna say, Steve, you're right, absolutely. But some women feel like that. They can't say anything. They forget it's their house too. You know, how? When did you forget they that? They forget that. They do. They do. They I do. I don't understand that. It, huh. It's in it's in the handbook. Yeah, <laughs> it is. Yes, it is. <laughs> we just they just have to be reminded from time. It's a man's time. job to provide the house. It's a woman's responsibility to make it a home. A guy don't know how to make a house a home, man. You can think you can, but if you let a woman really do it, you'll have yourself something. Mm-hmm. It'll have little amenities in it that your dumb behind can't even think of. It's I know just, how to pay just, for it. That's man. all I know how to do. I know how to pay for it. I don't well, decorate none of that, man. Bye. You learned your lesson well. Man, <laughs> shut up. He said shut up. <laughs> I know. You've learned your lesson. All right, here we go. Jessica in Memphis says, My ex-boyfriend's mother came to town, and I went by to tell her hello. My husband was furious when I told him I was going, but I went anyway. I figured he was going to be mad either way, so I went to see her briefly. Why is my husband mad? Because why are you still connected to your ex? He your ex-boyfriend. His mama? Say hi over the phone and keep it moving. Yeah. I don't blame your husband. I'd be hot too. Yeah. I don't give yeah. a damn about his mama. <laughs> Call my mama. Yeah. That means no, she's for real. To you want to visit somebody's mama? And, and look, visit man. your mother in law. Uh, yeah. How you know his mama coming to town? And, and plus, see. Uh huh. Mm. We ain't got time for that right there. If you ain't got time to maintain that relationship, and then she on the phone, I'm going anyway. He gonna be mad. See, so you gonna mess around? Okay, go ahead. Go on. Yeah. Why he mad? You gonna mess around? Stay on over there with them. See, then. W- mm-hmm. once you tell a man, mm-hmm. I'm gonna do what I want to do, no matter what you say. Mm-hmm. You finna open up a can of worms. You ain't gonna be able to close. Yeah, that's disrespect. Too much. Yeah, much so. All right, moving on to Misha in Savannah, Steve. Uh, Misha says, I walked in on my husband in the bathroom and he was on the phone. I don't know if he had been whispering or what, but he was quiet. He said he was on hold with the bank, but he wouldn't let me see his phone screen. Was he lying or not? Mm. God! (laughs) Yeah, probably not. (laughs) Probably not Uh talking to the bank. Uh (laughs) Yeah, he probably was talking to the bank, you know. Uh -uh. Uh Uh-uh. I know I whisper when I talk to my bank. Yeah, what you, right. What do you say? What you be saying, Steve? <laughs> Give me some more millions. What you got? 
<laughs> what you got on? Right. That's what, you <laughs> well, look, look, that's what I'm saying. But if you had come in now and give him saying that, how much do I want? Oh, uh-huh. okay. Uh-huh. <laughs> so, uh-huh. so Tamisha and Savannah, yes, your husband was lying. <laughs> that's your question. I mean, you know, what time was it? I ain't never talked to my baby in the bathroom. Ever. Uh -uh. Mm. (laughs) Ever. Right. Right. You need to be in the daylight. (laughs) <laughs> so you can pay attention. Man, right? I got to have this paperwork out. I got to yeah. do I got to look stuff up while you talking. Ain't be in no bathroom, man. Ain't nothing in here. You got your reading glasses on, everything. <laughs> you should right. do what now? <laughs> <laughs> That's what you asked the bank representative. Yeah. <laughs> you finna do what now? <laughs> you what now? <laughs> yeah. How stupid is he to be doing that, though, in the bathroom? Yeah. And his wife yeah. is at the house. Now, all right, this is the last one, Steve, last one. Ava in Harlem writes, I was home sick yesterday, and my neighbor's 17-year-old daughter was in her backyard smoking weed with her boyfriend. I know that boy wasn't supposed to be there during the day, so do I mention this and the weed smoking to my neighbor? That's not your business. Oh, no, no, ain't your kids. kids. What? Raise your own kids. <laughs> It's, you got it's plenty to do with them. What you worried about they damn kids for? Raise your own kids. Get all up in here talking about me bothering these people about their seventeen year old in their backyard smoking weed with their boyfriend. Yeah, the boy wasn't supposed to be over there. Yeah, they wasn't supposed to be in the backyard smoking weed. But what is your damn kids doing? <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Man, go over there and watch your own family. What you all in this backyard for? <laughs> Kill me with that plenty going on on your side of the field. <laughs> Call your damn kids, and I, you ain't going to believe what they did. Best uh, advice ever. <laughs> Man. Yeah. I know yeah. that boy wasn't supposed to be over there. Neither was you. <laughs> Talk about nosy neighbors. <laughs> See, then you're going to wind up, then you're going to get your mailbox toe out the ground one night. Then you're going to get your little flower bed destroyed. You know, mm-hmm. you're going to say who drove by and shot that BB through the window. You can't do none of these kids no more. These other kids, they don't do that. You Kids don't raise other people's kids no more. That It takes a village that went out the window. Yeah. That went really? out the window. My generation, last generation, did that. It take a, take a village to raise it. No, uh, uh-uh. uh. We got in trouble down the street. Them parents could reprimand us and then bring us up to our parents. They don't do yeah. that no more. Leave them little ignorant ass kids alone. <laughs> and worry about your own. Worry about your damn kids. <laughs> where where they at? <laughs> what? illogical decision have they made. Where are they smoking weed? <laughs> <sighs> All right. All right, CLO, thank you. Your son Look. probably sitting up in the trap house right now. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, God. We're in the trap. Thank you, CLO. Coming up at the top of the hour, we'll have some entertainment news for you right after We're this. We're in the trap. <laughs> same thing. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Between April 1971 and September 1972, six young black girls were snatched off the streets in Washington, D.C. It took four murders before the police finally realized that one person was responsible. I will admit the others when you catch me if you can. Signed, Freeway Phantom. This child was uh, laying on the side of the road. It appeared that she was probably either dragged out of the car or thrown out of the car. The person said, I murdered your daughter. The killer believed that he may have been seen by the mother. Did my mother see me? That guy is, he's out of sync with even the worst people. I thought that they would catch him. I thought it was just a matter of time. Is it possible that the killer is still alive? Listen to Freeway Phantom on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. If you're looking for someone to help you unpack Queen Charlotte, a Bridgerton story, you're in the right place. It's me, Gabby Collins. Come with me, because on Queen Charlotte, the official podcast, we're stepping behind the scenes and the drawing boards of this team to experience the life breathed into the Bridgerton prequel. 
listen to the leaps executive producer and series director Tom Verica took to capture the feeling that's put that lump in your throat. And you've got to catch creator Shonda Rhimes. She's dropping gems, diamonds, and mics. On this podcast, we're going beyond the basic line of questioning and getting to the heart of the show, all while appreciating the contributions of the show's creative teams and remarkable cast. Go inside each episode of Queen Charlotte of Bridgerton's story with the creatives, the cast, and creator Shonda Rhimes leading the way. Listen to Queen Charlotte, the official podcast, Thursdays on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or anywhere you get your podcasts. Well, actor Jonathan Majors was arrested over the weekend in New York on domestic violence allegations after an alleged dispute with a 30-year-old woman who was identified as his girlfriend. Now, according to her statement to the NYPD, she and Majors were returning home from a bar and she confronted him about texting another female and that started an argument. She reportedly tried to get a sneak peek at his phone and then Majors allegedly grabbed her hand, slapped her and he put his hands around her neck, strangling her. The woman told officers that she was assaulted and was taken to the hospital with, quote, minor injuries to her tech, to her head and neck. And officers arrested Jonathan Majors without incident, and he was released from custody shortly thereafter. His rep said in a statement, he has done nothing wrong. We look forward to clearing his name and clearing this up. That's all the information we have right now. Wow. Yeah. Oh. He don't need I'm that. Not sure. He, don't he need had that. next. No. Yeah. 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 Next. yeah. Number you one. You can't movie be three, doing three. this. Mm-hmm. Nah. Mm-hmm. You can't mm-hmm. do this. Mm-hmm. You got to control I, that. I, 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 I just hope it ain't true. Ah. Uh. Yeah. And if uh, it is true, let's man. Not, let's not judge him yet. Let's make sure. No, we're not well, judging well, that's you can't I'm do saying. that. You cannot I'm do that. I'm saying I'm hoping it's not true. Absolutely. But now. If it is. Man, damn, dog. Damn. The harder they fall. But you know, man, I'm, you know, listen to me, y'all. They cheer for you on the way up, but when you get there, all the biggest cheers is if they can bring you down. Mm -hmm. And people would do anything, man. I'm telling you, man, you've got to protect your brand at all times. You got to get, first of all, he is at a level right now he's never been at. Right. Now people think he's sexy and all this here. In mm-hmm. Creed two had his shirt off, Creed three, three. whatever that is, mm-hmm. had his had his shirt off. Look, it's gonna be some more people texting. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's all you saying? Huh? I'm not talking about the incident, y'all. So let's get this. This yeah, all right, that I'm right, talking right. about is popularity. Yeah, because when so you look right like now. that They're with your gonna shirt get off, it's, gonna get it's fitting to be some more people texting. Mm-hmm. And you have to return these texts. You have to? Mm-hmm. That's right. I, I don't see no way. We want to. Carla, we want to. Oh, that's the difference between have to. Uh, the you the don't desire. Have to, but and you no, 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 no. You have to have return to. these texts. And why is that? that Steve? Why do you have to? Because this is new to you. Mm-hmm. And you don't know that you're not. He you don't know yet. See, this type of fame is new for him. Now, he's been working on his craft for quite some time. Yeah, but the yeah. fame has arrived in 2023. Mm-hmm. Mm. It was it was going up there and harder they fall. Yep. I liked it. Yeah, but boy, he did is. nobody like him like this till he took his shirt off. Ooh, I mean, well, now, I don't I know mean, who putting these clothes the on him. I don't know who dressing him in these <laughs> the photos. Stylist that you have an issue him. with. <laughs> yeah, he need to fire him. Take all these feathers. And Fellas off my all this hill boy. Sitting up here with this bathrobe on. You on whoever your stylist is, you need to let them go. Cause cause they they showing him wrong. He, they're but, making uh, him too sexy. No, they yeah, make, it's I, I too, saw a slavery suit though. It didn't look good. I saw it. It looked Come it on, wasn't. man. You can dress this dude better. Yeah. But I well, just I hope it's not day. true. I hope yeah. this woman isn't harmed. I hope this was some anger moment. I just said that. I don't know yeah. what it is. He has to control that. Yeah. Brother, y'all got to really watch what you do. Yes. But now, away from the that. incident, he has to return these texts, ladies. Y'all don't mm. know that, but he has to. Well, it's he not doesn't option. need to be in a relationship then. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you know, well, the relationship was before this, see. <laughs> Yeah, yeah we didn't on. know he had a girlfriend. See, now she, yeah, she I didn't got know to he cope had a girlfriend with the new either. additives. Mm-hmm. Right, right, right. See, right. And, 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 and maybe she thought she was higher up in the food chain than she was. But he got to see what this 
he got to see what all this sex symbol stuff going to do. Yeah. I see it. Yeah. yeah Let me happened. show y'all something. Have y'all noticed <laughs> when questioned that about everybody it. other than John Legend, everybody that's on People's Sexiest Man contest, right after that, they got to go test it. <laughs> Except for Denzel. Yeah. <laughs> They got to go test it. He had been arrived. They just got yes. the notice late. Uh-huh. <laughs> right. Except for Denzel. <laughs> yeah. Tommy, if they pick. vote you people's 100, I mean, sexiest man in the world, Alive. right after that, we're going to have TMZ story. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Why definitely. you say that, Uncle Steve? Oh, definitely. I'm not going to say Oh, gonna, definitely. <laughs> you hear? Uh-huh. You think I'm going to just, just be sexy and not move around the country with it? What you think I'm going to do? I'm going on tour with your title. I'm going on tour Boy. all over the world oh, with you. Tour with your life. title. Go ahead, Carla. Well, Junior, <laughs> sexiest <laughs> man in America. Mm-hmm. Uh, Next really day, bad. what you yeah. going to do? Oh, I'm telling you right now, we don't wear shirts. <laughs> yeah. We don't wear no shirts. I don't care what type of shirt it is. Yeah. I never put another shirt on, fool. <laughs> Junior, what about you? I'm starting. I'm starting a cologne line. Sex. That's it. Huh? What you gonna do, huh? You ain't you, you sexy men line. Vest. <laughs> you just rocking vest. All vest. Just vest. <laughs> vest. <laughs> what, what about you gonna do? I don't, I, don't, I don't like my nipple showing because they're okay. sensitive. Okay. Yeah. What about the, the bottoms? What what do you oh, I gotta have bottom on. That way too much pressure. Oh, I'm not doing that. Oh no, y'all. I gotta wear bottoms. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Winnie the Pooh moment. <laughs> See, man, I, I can't do the Winnie Pooh just a t shirt. Yeah. And do the Winnie Pooh dance. Yeah. Damn, Winnie. <laughs> Come, Carla. Winnie. Pooh tripping. <laughs> Pooh tripping. Pooh. Damn, Pooh. He don't want. <laughs> Pooh, you need to wear your pants, Pooh. <laughs> All right. All right, guys. Coming up at 20 minutes after the hour, Jay-Z is now worth $2.5 billion, $2.5 billion with a B. Lord. And his billionaire wife, Beyonce, has a couture fashion line with black-owned clothing line, Balmain. We'll talk about these stories coming up right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Well, congratulations going on to Jay-Z. He's just become the very first rapper to reach a net worth of $2.5 billion. That's right. I said $2.5 billion with a B. This is according to Forbes. Uh, Jay-Z has made his fortune through a range of investments, including real estate, the music streaming service, Tidal, and his liquor brand. He owns a stake in Uber, and he's involved in several other other business ventures. So congratulations once again to Jay-Z. Now moving on to Jay-Z's billionaire wife, Beyonce. Beyonce is part of ways with Adidas and they have mutually agreed to end her Ivy Park collection with Adidas. Reps for Adidas said that creative differences were the reason behind the split, but it could be because Beyonce is working with Olivier Roosting and uh, Balmain to create her own Renaissance inspired couture collection. Okay. She wants to show up her personal style and highlight Balmain's history. Beyonce's pieces are intricately detailed with beading, embroidery, metallic detailing, all of that. Color palette is a mix of bronze and gold and jewel tones and pops of bright colors. So Steve, I gotta ask you this because you're so into fashion. You love fashion. Would you do a collaboration like this with a brand? Would And, and if so, which brand would it be? These which pieces are gonna yeah. be high. Uh-huh. It's gonna be expensive. Man. Hell yeah. <laughs> Which one you think? I'd either do, uh, I want to give a Pharrell on Louis Vuitton, because he the uh-huh. new designer at Louis. Oh, yeah. I'd okay. do something with them. Okay. Put it If out they there. ask me. Uh huh. Or, I I could easily do something with Dolce. Oh, yeah. yeah. But they probably do something with Levi's, dog. You'll do something with Levi's. I'm too old. I'm about no, 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 no damn Levi. <laughs> Wait, don't say that. <laughs> I don't wear none. What am I wearing? What last time I had a pair of Levi's? What you wear when you on your ranch? Boy. When you on your ranch? Camouflage, you, you know. Camouflage by Louis Vuitton? No, by Bass Pro Shop. <laughs> 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 Dog, you got to, pick, you got to get world. the people that make this stuff that's for people that's out in them woods. Yeah. Louis ain't got no business out in them woods. <laughs> You gotta keep them ticks and leeches and gnats off your ass. You ain't got time to be out here making no fashion statement. 
Snake don't give a damn about no fashion snake bitch. Snake state bitch. You better get these snake boots on. And they only come in two colors. <laughs> but you're still fly with that. But yeah, yeah congratulations to Jay Z, to Beyonce. Oh, collaboration. I, I oh, think Jay? collaboration you and I uh, Pharrell Steve would, would be good. With a collaboration. I would do it. That's in a cool. heartbeat. That ball man ain't gonna be high though. If, if she, man, that's gonna be so expensive. It's expensive <laughs> now. Yeah, yeah. I know. I got cheap. two pieces and I'm paying notes on them too. That, that's <laughs> <high>. <laughs> <laughs> notes. On two pieces. <laughs> yeah. It's expensive now. <laughs> All right. <laughs> We're moving on. Uh, Sister Odell just walked in the studio, so she's here. We'll talk to her right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, so Sister Odell popped in the studio as she does from time to time. And uh, very often lately, huh? Hello. <laughs> Well, I don't want to waste a lot of time with my with my brutal for singing, so I'm just gonna say good morning, Shirley Carly, uh, Mississippi Junior Thomas. What's going on today? What is y'all talking about this morning? I le- morning. left my glasses, so I can't read nothing. Oh, okay. oh. Well, oh. you know that's why I have I squint when I don't have my glasses on. Yes, ma'am. Mm-hmm. Yes, ma'am. Well, mm-hmm. we're glad you're here, Sister Odell, because maybe you can clear some things up. And good morning. Sure Pastor. will. All right, well, this story, uh, okay, give us your take on this story. There was a, a, a church pastor in Missouri who claims that he said a prayer over the feet of a woman who had only three toes. She had three toes amputated, okay? She had three toes amputated. Get that in your head. And then three new toes miraculously just grew back. What? <laughs> yes, ma'am. He, he, yeah, he claimed a You believe that? Uh, well, I mean, I I, I'm asking you if you believe it. Now, he unless claimed. your mama's a lizard, what you think the chances of that is? <laughs> <laughs> but, Ain't nobody growing toes back. <laughs> it gets deeper than that, Sister Odell. It, again, uh-huh. again uh-huh. his name is John, uh, Pastor John Lindell of the James River Church in Missouri. He claimed a creative miracle took place when three new toes appeared, and then after another 30 minutes... Guess what happened? Toenails grew on the new toes. You can't make In this stuff up. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Let me tell you something. What? <laughs> Sister Bernard one time was shouting at the church. Yes, mm-hmm. ma'am. And jumped mm-hmm. on the top of my nursing shoe with her high heel. Uh-huh. What happened? And tore the baby toenail off. You know when that was? When? 1924. <laughs> uh-huh, uh-huh. Um. It it's 2023, damn near 100 years later, and that toenail still ain't back. It's still gone, <laughs> sister. Tell that baby toenail so, is still That gone. toenail, she tore it right off with that heel. Mm-hmm. Oh, but her shouting was over there because I knocked her. I knocked her <laughs> ass out. Soon, because I, I just couldn't help it. You know, the pastor had to talk to me about that. See, you right, know, I'm sure. People feel with the spirit. But when she came down on that toe, she was about 240. You know, she's a big woman. Uh-huh. She came down on that toe at 240 and tore that toenail off. I, all I could do was slap her. <laughs> it was a reaction. Just, you know. You know, one it, of those knee-jerk felt, reactions. Know, it it mm-hmm. was what it was, you know. Yeah. Well, this yeah. toenail only took 30 minutes, and you said almost 100 years ago your toenail. Girl, that ain't real. That. No, unless somebody artist was there and painted some fingers and toes on her. So you, you don't, don't believe it. Can, you don't believe this story. No, I had a, my cousin uh, got they uh, four uh-huh. of their toes amputated because she had uh, sugar. Yeah, diabetes. diabetes. And uh, yes, ma'am. her yes, son ma'am. was an artist. He drew, mm-hmm. drew four toes on mm-hmm. top of her nook. Girl, look <laughs> just like feet. Mm-hmm. But it was weird, though, because the big toe was just way longer than the rest of them. <laughs> and uh, he painted them on there so good they look real and everything. You know, uh-huh. she was wearing sandals and everything. Okay. Just crazy though when that big toe is out that far. It just uh-huh. looks crazy. Uh-huh. Just well, that's far. what happened here. The the pastor prayed over her feet, and this is what happened. Yeah, that's good. He said a that, prayer. That, that really help. You know, it's uh-huh. these churches now. It's doing so much tricky stuff. He had a pastor on the internet the other day. 
cussing at the funeral what? had a pistol in his hand. Mm. <laughs> yeah, that's how mm. it. Sister Odia, I know what you're yeah, talking about. JPJ. And him and everybody in there going to hell. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's too much. You going to hell for sitting in there listening to him and stick, mm -hmm. stuck around for the rest of the service. <laughs> Once you pull a pistol out, I tell you what. I'm a D and I got to pull mine out. We'll both be just pointing pistols. But your service, you're going to be nervous, though. That's for sure. Nervous? Nervous in service. the service. Yes. <laughs> All right. Sister Odell, thank you for clearing these things bye up bye, for us. Bye-bye. Good. Anytime I can help you, let me know. All right. Bye. Thank you. Coming up next, it is a nephew with today's prank phone call right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Coming up at about four minutes after the hour, it's my strawberry letter for today. And the subject is, why did she change her wardrobe? Why did she change her wardrobe? All right, we'll find out why she had to change her wardrobe in just a few when we uh, get into the strawberry letter. Because right now it is time for the nephew and today's prank phone call. Nephew, nephew, nephew. What do you have on the Shirley, menu today? Something crazy. Shirley, know, all week, all week all is full know. week because we on our way to April Fool's. This is all, this is, I'm going to be mo ignorant this week. Than, 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 than mostly. It's your, than it's mostly. your time. It's your, it's your time. This, uh -huh. Yeah, yeah. This, uh -huh. this, I got to shine on uh -huh. this, 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 this. This leads up to ignorance that's coming Saturday night uh -huh. at the uh, 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 Texas Trust. Me and Junior Boy coming in yeah. there with Monique, Dominique, yeah. and uh, Rodney Perry. Yes, we coming please. up in there ignorant. So I'm going to be more ignorant than ever mm -hmm. before. This prank right here is called You Ain't Married. All right. But who are you telling this to? I, I'm not trying to convince y'all of nothing. That's not what I'm trying to do. Y'all know I'm ignorant. I'm not trying to convince y'all. I'm just letting you know the magnitude of the stupidity that's going to be this week. Okay? I'm just letting you know the magnitude of the stupidity that's going to be this week. Nah, nah. I said it. Let's go, cat dog. You ain't married. Hello, I'm trying to reach Brian. Yeah, this is he. How you doing, Brian? My name is Daniel. I wanted to give you a call today. You you got a minute? Uh, yeah. Okay, listen. Um, you're you're Brian. Um, Brian, right? You're married to uh to Althea. Yeah. Hello, hello. Yeah, I'm here. Yeah, that that that's me. That's my wife. Yeah. Okay. Got a question for you. How long have you guys been married? Going on nine years now. We've been married. Now, who is this? My name is Daniel. Were were you um were were you guys married at, at Greater New <laughs> Missionary Baptist Church? Uh, let me see. Yeah, yeah, yep, yeah, yeah. That's the name of that church. Yeah, Greater. New <laughs> by nine years. Yeah, that's right. What, why? What's going on? What what you asking me all these questions for? Okay. Do you remember the 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 the, the minister that officiated your actual uh, wedding ceremony? Yeah, that was uh, Reverend. <laughs> Reverend. Right. Yeah. Okay. I got the right person. I wanted to make sure I had the right person, uh, Brian. So I'm I'm sorry if it if it seemed a little weird to you. Here right. here's what's going on. We've just come up with a new discovery, a lot of information that um, Reverend G none of his credentials are true. Everything is false. He's not a minister at all. He never was a minister, and every single wedding ceremony that he officiated is basically null and void so oh, I, and i hate to be the, the the bearer of bad news but you and althea even though you think you've been married for nine years you guys are not married oh, no, at no. all no 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 that that you gotta have the wrong person because me and that thing we got we got married about nine years ago and we <laughs> preacher. i i i i, 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 I know that, one I know he, that. He, he what i'm preacher. telling you is he do, he's, he never was ordained. He's never been an ordained minister. He's not a minister at all. So when he performed this ceremony, your wedding ceremony, he had no right to be doing that. You guys are not are not married. You know, you guys have been living in sin for nine years. Hold on, hold, hold on, Dad. Let me tell you something. I ain't been living in no sin. Me and my wife, we have been married for nine years, and that man, he's a preacher. I'm telling you, he's a preacher. I heard him preach last Sunday. Sir, as of today... He has, he has no right to be in anybody's pulpit. He has no right to be officiating, whether it's weddings or funerals, no matter what it is, christenings for children. He's not allowed to do that, and we have uh, officially stopped him from doing anything serving under 
uh, uh, as being a pastor or a minister. We have stopped that. But what I want you to know is that you have been living in sin, and you don't you. If that we want to try and get you guys married as soon as possible, so you're not living in sin. Oh no, Doc! I ain't been living in no sin. I have been married for nine years. This woman, she has been taking care of me and my kids for the past nine wait, wait, years. Wait, 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 wait a minute! Oh, wait a minute! You, you guys have my... you guys have children? Yeah, yeah, we, we got two two kids, two beautiful kids. Okay, then those kids are bastards. Bastards? Hold on, hold on. Let me tell you something. My kids ain't no bastards. What about your kids? Your kids are bastards. No, sir. My kid, my kids were born in wedlock. Your kids have been born out of you, wedlock. I'm telling you, that man did my service, and he is a preacher. He's a man after God's own heart himself. He done done everything that, that he could for me and my family. He is a preacher. Sir, I, I, don't, I, I know it's hard for you to, to, to swallow the truth, but I want you to know, and I need you to be able to tell Althea that you guys are not married, not as of right now. No, no. Okay, so hold on, hold on, hold on. Now, back in the olden days, but before all these all these colleges and stuff came came about, you telling me that them men back in the old days that they wasn't no preachers, that they wasn't men, men after the cloth? Is that what you're saying to me? Uh, what what are you what are you what are you what are you getting at, sir? What I'm trying to say is, back in the olden days, back in the twenties and thirties, they didn't have all these colleges and all these degrees and stuff like these new preachers got these days. That man now he was from back then and. God called them, and that's what they went on to. And all them people that they married back then, they did the same thing today. You don't need no degree to say that, that you're a preacher. You don't need no license to say you, you're a preacher. Me and my wife, we've been married for nine years. My kids have been born in wedlock. We were sir, married. We were married by Reverend <laughs> My friends and family, they was all there. Sir, the bottom line is that you have been living in sin because you have not been married with your wife for the last nine years. And your kids, I, I, I hate to say it, your kids are bastards. Now, hold on now. I done told you. Don't say nothing else about my kids. See, now, I ain't no cusser, but don't push me. My kids ain't no bastards. You understand me? You don't get me up. Sir, I'm trying to give you the truth and try to get you in here and get you married so you will not be living in sin any more than what you are. I ain't living in no sin. Look, now, you don't make me whoop your ASS. You understand? Me and my wife, we have been married for nine years. Don't sit up here and call me talking about the we ain't married. That man ain't no preacher. You understand? Now, get off my so, phone. What, you, that's my wife. Those are my kids. They have been born in wedlock. You understand? Sir, sir, I, I, I just wanted to call and give you the information so that you could probably stop living in sin. That's all I wanted to do. I ain't living in no sin. That's what I just told you. You ain't hear me? I ain't living in no sin. Maybe you the one that's living up in some sin. Now, you ain't got nothing to say to me. That man has married us nine years ago. Now, get sir, your ASS off my phone. Sir, sir, I, sir, I have one more thing. I, one more thing I'd like to say you to you. You ain't got nothing else to say to me. You ain't get your ASS off my CAM phone now. Do you understand me? Oh. I ain't got time for this foolishness. Sir, can I say one more thing? What you got to say to me now? I just wanted to let you know that this is nephew Tommy from the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Your wife Althea got me to prank phone call you. Oh man, no. <laughs> oh lordy, <laughs> that, that, yeah. Uh-huh. Doc, yeah, I almost went in on you, Doc. You almost made me go there. Yeah, I'm a good at this. You say, Althea, put you up to this? Althea got me to prank you, man. Wow, man. Oh, man. Hey, man, you all right with me, brother. I got to ask you something, man. What is the baddest, and I mean the baddest, radio show in the land? The Steve Harvey Morning Show, man. <laughs> yeah. You know, sure to call it, y'all might, and Junior, too. Y'all might want to check and see if y'all passed her. Really got uh -huh. the credentials. Y'all might not be married, to be honest with you. Oh, yeah. A lot of y'all well, might not be married. Yeah. You sure? Okay. Yeah. Who was yeah. your pastor, uh, Carl, that married Dr. Reverend James E. Lightfoot. Ooh. <laughs> you know yeah. he a pastor. Yeah, he, yeah, he, His he name a real alone. Pastor. He a real pastor. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. From the north side of Houston, and, and, <laughs> Mount Zion. And I, I know so. Shirley, because that was Jasper Williams. That's right, that's right. <laughs> yeah. Yes, 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 yes. Now, Junior, who married y'all? you were there. Huh? <laughs> I was there. Yeah, you were there. You participated. Yeah. Uh, we were there, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Your baby was, yeah, was in my there. wedding, Carla. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> yeah. Junior, who oh. married y'all? Amy. Amy. Oh, yeah, you might not, you might not be married to You might not you be married. Might need to that's, why I, that's why I was quiet the whole time. I ain't want to tell you. <laughs>
You might not be married. Her name is Amy. That's all I know. <laughs> Strawberry letter coming up next. Subject, why did she change her wardrobe? Why? We'll find out right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Between April 1971 and September 1972, six young black girls were snatched off the streets in Washington, D.C. It took four murders before the police finally realized that one person was responsible. I will admit the others when you catch me, if you can. Signed, Freeway Fan. This child was uh, laying on the side of the road. It appeared that she was probably either dragged out of the car or thrown out of the car. The person said, I murdered your daughter. The killer believed that he may have been seen by the mother. Did my mother see me? That guy is, he's out of sync with even the worst people. I thought that they would catch him. I thought it was just a matter of time. Is it possible that the killer is still alive? Listen to Freeway Phantom on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. If you're looking for someone to help you unpack Queen Charlotte of Bridgerton's story, you're in the right place. It's me, Gabby Collins. Come with me, because on Queen Charlotte, the official podcast, we're stepping behind the scenes and the drawing boards of this team to experience the life breathed into the Bridgerton prequel. Listen to the leaps executive producer and series director Tom Verica took to capture the feeling that's put that lump in your throat. And you've got to catch creator Shonda Rhimes. She's dropping gems, diamonds, and mics. On this podcast, we're going beyond the basic line of questioning and getting to the heart of the show, all while appreciating the contributions of the show's creative teams and remarkable cast. Go inside each episode of Queen Charlotte of Bridgerton's story with the creatives, the cast, and creator Shonda Rhimes leading the way. Listen to Queen Charlotte, the official podcast, Thursdays on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or anywhere you get your podcasts. It is time now for today's Strawberry Letter. And if you need advice on relationships, on work, sex, parenting, or more, please submit your Strawberry Letter to steveharveyfm.com. And all you have to do is click Submit Strawberry Letter. We will receive your letter. We will get your letter. We will read your letter. And we will possibly read it on the air. And you never know. It could be yours. You never know. Buckle up and hold on tight. We got it for you. Here it is. Strawberry letter. Thank you, nephew. Subject, why did she change her wardrobe? Dear Stephen Shirley, I've been married for 12 years and I love my wife, but sometimes I cheat. I tell all the women that I am married and I make sure they have something to lose too before we go all the way. So, having said that, one of my son's teachers had that look in her eye like she wanted to get to know me better. My wife loves her, so it was just my luck that my wife asked her to keep our son on Tuesday and Thursday nights so she could take a public speaking class for work. This teacher lady is fine, and she knows it. I started going home early to relieve her, and I always let her know I was interested. After a week or so, she started flirting back, so I paid her extra money for babysitting so she would know what was up. She propositioned me first, and she said she was bored at my house, so I needed to come home early to check on her. So I went home to check on her. We started Mm. playing around, but I am not ignorant enough to have sex in my own house, so we planned to meet up the next day at a hotel. That was Tuesday, but then on Thursday, things went left. I got home early, and this chick was in my house wearing a tight-fitting dress with her breasts and behind poking out, and she smelled like expensive perfume. Her hair was done, and she had on makeup. I loved it, but she was overdressed for her babysitting job. I told her to hurry and leave before my wife got home, but it was too late. My wife walked in, and the first thing she asked was, why did she change her wardrobe? She didn't have that on when I left. I was standing there looking stupid with my boy at attention. Miss Teacher Lady lied and said she had a date to get to. Nothing happened at all. So how do I convince my wife? Hmm. Uh, Listen, you serial cheater, okay? If you think I'm going to help you convince your wife that this one time, one time, you didn't cheat, you're crazy. You get no sympathy. No, no sympathy here. Uh, 
Maybe Steve will help you. I don't know, but I'm not I'm not helping you at all because this is what you do. This is what you do and this time you just got caught. Um I just have to tell you, you know you're wrong. You know you're wrong. You said she was fine. She gave you the eye and you let her know you were interested. You even paid her extra for babysitting. You were playing around with her in your house and and made plans to see her the very next day. Then you went home early to check on her. You said you weren't that ignorant to have sex with her at your own home, but you are stupid though. Nothing in this letter says you're smart or that you respect your wife and your marriage because you've already admitted you're a cheater. You did that in the first couple of sentences Uh, and and you act like it's no big deal. I'm not helping you get out of this. This is just too dumb for me. Uh, It's too dumb. Steve? Thank you, Shirley. I'll take it from here. Uh, I admire and respect your opinion. I think you're spot on. Now, let me give this uh, dumbass man uh, some (laughs) thoughts. Joe Stupid behind. Boy, you're so damn dumb. Uh, you've been married for 12 years, and I love my wife, but sometimes I cheat. Right there, dog, you lost every woman listening to this. There's nothing we can say or anything we can say to you that's going to fix this. You're stupid. I wouldn't even have wrote no letter and said nothing like this. You, what are you talking about this for? <laughs> You dumb. You you don't think somebody going to read this letter that know somebody's wife that hired a teacher for Tuesday and Thursday that know a lady that's taking a speaking class? You don't see nobody doing one and one is two? Man, you dumb. I tell all the women I'm married and I make sure they got something to lose too. What? You don't care nothing about the one you finna lose. You think they're going to say, oh, I got a lot to lose, too. Let's lose it together. That's what you think they're going to say? So having said that, one of my son's teacher had that look in her eye like she wanted to get to know me better. My wife loves her so much. It was just my luck. Here we go. He lucky now. I like this part right when he said, just my luck. I couldn't believe it, man, that my wife asked her to keep our son on Tuesdays and Thursday nights so she could take a public speaking class for work. Teacher lady, fine, she know it. I started going home early to relieve her and always let her know I was interested. Well, after a week or so, she started flirting back, so I paid extra money for babysitting so she would know what was up. Oh, you bought it? Mm. She propositioned me first and said she was bored in my... Boy, boy, no, no, she didn't. No, she didn't. You started paying her extra money to let her know what was up. You was propositioning her. Then you turned around and said she propositioned me first. She said she was bored at my house. No, that was that was to give you what you had paid for. <laughs> See, since ain't none of y'all coming out and saying it, y'all suddenly doing it. You start giving her extra money for babysitting so she could let her know what was up. Then she said, well, I'm bored at the house. You need to come check on me. You can start getting some of this money back in payment form immediately. That's what happened, dog. Try to write in here like ain't nobody, like somebody's stupid. (laughs) Now we get to the rest of the stupid letter when we come back. Yeah. Whew. All right. Um. We'll have part two of Steve's response coming up on today's Strawberry Letter. The subject, why did she change her wardrobe? We'll get back into it at 23 minutes after, right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, come on, Steve. Let's recap today's Strawberry Letter and and, uh, finish up with your response. Well, this man been married 12 years. and The subject is why she changed her wardrobe. Mm -hmm. He loves his wife, but he cheats sometimes. Like I said, after you said that, bro, you lost everybody in the letter. Uh, and you tell women all the time that you married, and I make sure that they have something to lose, too. Like what? Like what? And what woman do you get to go along with this that says, yeah, we can, we'll, we got a family, too, and we'll lose it? Yeah, bro, do you understand how that don't make no sense? 
And you're trying to, you're just telling us that in the letter, because you're not finding a whole lot of married women that want to do this. You're just not, dog. You ain't nobody that fortunate. You putting it out there like you try to make it so, like, you know, if if you going to let something lose, you make sure you with women got something to lose, too. You stupid. And as a teacher at the school, it's real fine that's one of your son's teachers and your wife loves her so much. You say it was just your luck that your wife asked her to keep your son on Tuesday and Thursday so she could take a special speaking class. You said, hi, dog, that's just my luck. And I started going home early to relieve her, but I always let her know I was interested. Then about a week or so, she started flirting back. So I paid her extra money for babysitting so she would know what was up. Then this fool says she propositioned me first and said, she, boy, stop. You made the proposition by paying the extra money to babysit. All y'all doing is y'all doing an act of prostitution. But what you're doing is you're not calling it prostitution. You paid her extra money to babysit. Wink, wink. Just so she would know what was up. She, being tricky herself, got the message and said, I'm bored at your house. You ought to come home early and check on me. What you think she wanted you to come home and check? So now you take your stupid bear home to check with her, and y'all start playing around. But then he say, I'm not so ignorant to have sex in my own house. Okay, bro. So the playing around y'all was doing Slapping, kissing, depressing up on each other, maybe some other things. But you didn't have intercourse in your own house, is what you say. So we planned to meet up the next day at a hotel. That was Tuesday. But then on Thursday, things went left. Dun, dun, dun. Now we into the letter now. Things went left. I got home early, and this chick was in my house wearing a tight-fitting dress with her breasts and behind poking out. She smelled like expensive perfume. Her hair was done, and she had makeup on. I loved it. But she was overdressed for her babysitting job. So you don't get busted. You told her to hurry up and leave before your wife got home, but it was too late. Your wife walked in. The first thing she asked was, why did she change her wardrobe? She did not have that on when I left. I'm standing there looking stupid with my boy at attention. So Miss Teacher Lady lied and said she had a date to get to. Nothing happened at all. So how do I convince my wife? Wait a minute, hold up, man. Are you that stupid? So let me ask you something. First of all, you stupid for what you're trying to get away with. But this last question, the girl had given the explanation for the tight dress, makeup, breast, booty out. She said she had a date to get to. Nothing happened at all. So how do I convince my wife? What you got to convince her of? It's right there. But see, you're so stupid. <laughs> you done wrote a letter in, and you don't think that somebody out here going to hear this letter that know that there's a woman taking a special speaking class, where ain't that many of them, who has hired a school teacher that watches her son, that's fine, and got a husband. You don't think none of that going to happen. And now you sitting up here going, how do I convince my wife? Dog, the convincing is going to have to be after this letter L. You're going to have to convince her that you didn't write this letter. That uh-huh. there's another man somewhere with a son that's got a fine teacher and who they wife was taking a special speech class at night. And they was over there watching and he would come home early. And then he uh, saw this lady with all this outfit on and then told her to help leave for his wife came home. And his wife came home just like your wife came home. You see how stupid this is. I'm not fitting to help you, dog. But you really, that ain't even your problem. Your overall problem is you's about a stupid something. And I just, I can't help stupid people. I just can't.
I can't. Dog, your marriage is going to be over shortly because you're going to get busted. You damn near got busted. Now. You couldn't even make it from Tuesday to Thursday. I be there. <laughs> You're disappointed? You ain't got no cheap <laughs> skills. You can't make All it right. two days. <laughs> All right, hit us up on Instagram at Steve Harvey FM to comment on today's Strawberry Letter. You can also check out the Strawberry Letter podcast on demand. Coming up next, it is Junior and Sports Talk right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. It is time now for Junior and Sports Talk. What you got, Junior? Okay, I don't know if y'all saw this, Tommy, but, man, I got to give a shout-out, Unc, to the Florida Atlantic University. Boy. Out. Man, Woo. I'm talking about... <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> what, what, I know, Unc. Hey, what, did, what did I tell you? I know, Unc. <laughs> I don't know why and when <laughs> y'all going to start here. <laughs> man. Uh, uh, who did they beat, Junior? <laughs> the Kansas State, man. What? You ain't get all of them right this <laughs> he got, Hold up. He hold Kansas up. Kansas State, and then they knocked off Tennessee. You did pick that up. You did. You said y'all not he watching picked Alabama, ball. though. You did yeah. pick Alabama. Well, they go. I picked Alabama. Yeah, they go. I, but, I'll pick something else, too. I'm waiting to hear it. No. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you of <were mates>. eight? Yeah. <laughs> you said, pick Miami. He did. You pick Miami. You did. Uh, let me say this, though, man. I don't give another shot, man. You know who scared me right now, though, in this tournament? Them boys up in UConn. They not playing. They not doing 10 three-point victories. They doing 20-point victories. They not playing. UConn mm, knocked mm. off Gonzaga. Won't be there this year, Gonzaga. Sorry. Won't oh, be there this zags year. Are the out. Zags is out. Won't be. Timmy, oh, that, that, uh, the Timmy with the mustache. All right, dog. Go on, go to the NBA, man. Get you some money. It's, it's over, man. But, mm -hmm. but it is it is a really good tournament. This tournament has been one of the best. What up, T? Dude, that little dude from Kansas State, though, man. He hey, man, played his heart, heart out, dog. Played, played his heart, heart out. Boy, played his heart out, man. <laughs> what happened to the U of H game? <laughs> Uh, we just, we already went over that. We already yeah, went over that. We know. We went over Coops, that. that uh, we don't have to keep going, going over it. They I tried were... to tell y'all that. Yeah, you did. You, you did, did. Unc. Okay, that's fine. You 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 right, Unc. You got okay, it. So, okay, so tell me the games, and let's go over the, what happened. Okay. Quickly. Okay, what the game with Miami and Houston? What, what, what did you see in that did game? Did I not week? tell you what Miami was going to do? <laughs> hey, okay, you next know. game. Hey, okay. Let's not let you next game. Okay, F, FAU at Tennessee. What did you see in that game? FAU wear them red and white uniforms on. They wore white the other day with the red. Uh -huh, I was they trying did. to get a little noop, little credit right here. here. <laughs> Shut up. Shut up. <laughs> Go ahead, Junior. Okay, uh. I, I right. just think this all tournament. Right. All, right. all right, one more game, Junior. I'm, I'm not bringing that one up. Huh? I'm not doing it. One more game. <laughs> we got to go. Hey, let's go. Sure. Uh -huh. we, we know. All right. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Thank just you, ask. Junior. Coming yeah. up at the top of the hour, we have a few questions from SteveHarveyFM.com right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Between April 1971 and September 1972, six young black girls were snatched off the streets in Washington, D.C., it took four murders before the police finally realized that one person was responsible. I will admit the others when you catch me, if you can. Signed, Freeway Fan. This child was uh, laying on the side of the road. It appeared that she was probably either dragged out of the car or thrown out of the car. The person said, I murdered your daughter. The killer believed that he may have been seen by the mother. Did my mother see me? That guy is, he's out of sync with even the worst people. I thought that they would catch him. I thought it was just a matter of time. Is it possible that the killer is still alive? Listen to Freeway Phantom on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. If you're looking for someone to help you unpack Queen Charlotte of Bridgerton's story, you're in the right place. It's me, Gabby Collins. Come with me, because on Queen Charlotte, the official podcast, we're stepping behind the scenes and the drawing boards of this team to experience the life breathed into the Bridgerton prequel. Listen to the leaps executive producer and series director Tom Verica took to capture the feeling that's put that lump in your throat. 
And you've got to catch creator Shonda Rhimes. She's dropping gems, diamonds, and mics. On this podcast, we're going beyond the basic line of questioning and getting to the heart of the show, all while appreciating the contributions of the show's creative teams and remarkable cast. Go inside each episode of Queen Charlotte of Bridgerton's story with the creatives, the cast, and creator Shonda Rhimes leading the way. Listen to Queen Charlotte, the official podcast, Thursdays on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or anywhere you get your podcasts. All right, this is from Charlie in San Diego, Steve. Charlie says, I've been married two years, and my husband got me a beautiful diamond pendant, and I can't find it anywhere. I, I feel terrible because he saved up a long time to get the exact one I asked for. Should I try to replace it or let him know that I lost it? I wouldn't do that. You wouldn't do what? I've been, I've been I, would, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't tell him you lost it. You say because see, men don't take that well, ladies. Because you know we we work hard and we try to give you the things you want in life, and then your little careless behind go lay it down somewhere now it's gone. Oh, I mm. oh, oh, don't get me started. What happened? Oh, man, you didn't have it insured. Mm. Uh, oh, why? Oh, y'all in my business? What happened, oh. Tommy? What what's going on? <laughs> oh, you lost something. Uh uh-uh, uh uh uh. I bought Jackie a bracelet, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and she lost it. And I I ain't I I ain't right to this day about this here, and we did not have it insured. Uh-huh. Ooh. Now nah, I don't oh, want to yeah. buy her ever a piece a of jewelry. Piece of jewelry ever, ever again. <laughs> ever. Ever. What? what Shirley, what? I've done that too. I lost some jewelry too. Have I lost you? a Rolex. My husband got me. You lost a Rolex. Rolex. Oh, you on punishment, now. I was on punishment for he replaced it, but I I had to hear about it for a long. I'm standing on your breath. Shut up! I know I lost it. Hold on, hold on. I'd have bought you one of them clocks that old boy be wearing around his neck. You wouldn't got no Rolex. Hold on, Tommy. Hold on, Tommy. Babe, let me see your hand. You want to okay, see your ring? Good. You want to know what a ring is? Yeah, yeah specifically your left God. hand, third finger. Yeah. Man. You good. All right, Steve, this is another one from Jorge in Arlington, Texas. Um, Jorge says, my girlfriend and I have been off and on for three years. We had sex last week, and I mistakenly said to her, look into my eyes, Angie, while we were having sex. That's not her name, and she left my house in tears. I feel so bad for what I did, but I told her it wasn't an it was an honest mistake because we break up so much. That made things even worse. What should I tell her? God, man, (laughs) it ain't what you need to tell her. You probably need to call Angie and see if she's available for a full time relationship. (laughs) That's really what you need to do, dog. Because you you ain't finna fix this one, dog. Because y'all gonna be sitting up riding in the car one day and say, "Baby, what you think of that over there? Why don't you ask Angie?" Uh huh. Oh yeah. 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 Yeah, This is a wrap, dog. This is a wrap. Messed that up, partner. And see, dog. What's crazy is you didn't just say her name. You put it in a sentence. Uh-huh. Oh, mm-hmm. man. Because you ain't never asked her to look in your eyes before. Oh, See, Angie. Oh, yeah. Look into my eyes, Angie. Angel. Dog, you didn't, you didn't hear, you didn't feel no moment of I need to stop this sentence. You didn't <laughs> went, ah, ah, ah. start coming out your mouth. You didn't say, Look, you didn't. You didn't think to try to go. Look, baby, look into my eye. Again, <laughs> again, again. What? Yeah, again. I was trying to say again, and I got coughed up. Look into my eyes again. My angel okay. could have said angel anything. anything. So what should he sure. tell her? There's nothing he can say. You're saying no, no, no. You need to call Angie, dog. <laughs> yeah. See, see, we break up so much that ain't going. So every time you break up, this what you go do. Okay, cool. That's it. So you ain't gonna be able to fix this. Mm-mm. The reason but, you break up is for cheating, and then when you break up, you go cheat some more, and then when you get back here, you starting to call her the names of the people that you're cheating with. Mm-hmm. You mm-hmm. got to let this go, dog. <laughs> and then There's this no proves hope. this proves another theory you you have, Steve, that men are never off. Men are never off. Mm. This we don't do it. all. Just yeah, off with you. It. 
Mm-hmm. <laughs> right there. That proves his statement uh-huh. for this sure. This proves it. <laughs> you right about that, sure. Yeah. <laughs> and then he, then he called her <laughs> by one of the off name. Uh-uh. <laughs> this is too crazy. All right. Coming up in 20 minutes after the hour, uh, we'll have more of the Steve Harvey Morning Show right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Well, our prayers are with the families in Mississippi and, of course, throughout the southeast that lost loved ones in the tornadoes this weekend. At least 26 people were killed, 26 people, and many injured after at least 11 tornadoes were reported across Mississippi and Alabama. Within a 24 period, this happened with all within 24 hours, President Joe Biden spoke to officials in the Mississippi area, and he said he is, quote, praying for those who have lost loved ones in the devastating tornadoes. And the plan is to focus our federal support where it is needed most quickly. And that's a good thing right there to help. Federal relief. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. I I Mm -hmm. saw some devastating, horrific, horrific images and pictures yeah, from that this this weather, this global warming, what's yeah. going on in this? Mm-hmm. I've been I've been going through it while being in Dallas. I I, I never uh-huh. heard the sirens before. Tornado warning. Oh, tra- oh, I've never. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's all yeah. new to me. Wow. Yeah. And you do not like thunderstorms and tornadoes. Oh no, I get I get so. to cover immediately. Yeah. I find yeah. where I need to be. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But again, uh, like the president said, our prayers are with the families. In uh, Mississippi, Alabama, all across the the southeast. Wow. This is something. Yeah, this this is something. These natural disasters are happening more frequently. In 24 hours, all this happened? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, we'll have more of the Steve Harvey Morning Show coming up at 33 minutes after the hour, right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. It is time for a round of Would You Rather. Would You Rather. Your wife reads your mind for one day, or would you rather your wife read your text for one day? Mm. Oh, this is true. Oh, either oh, way. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, get your get oh, up she in can get these texts. <laughs> she, she just can't get the text between me and Tommy. That's all. She yeah, yeah, yeah. She just can't get me and Tex and Junior's text. Uh, <laughs> she can't get, yeah, you can read these. She can get your text to to Carla. Me and oh, Carla. The last thing she need to do is read my mind. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Would you rather? Would you rather have the nickname Tiny, or would you rather have the nickname Speedy? Yeah. Well, I know which one I'm taking. Tell me which one you want to take. <laughs> Boy, I almost, I almost cussed at you, dog. Almost. Not on the air, uh, no. Uh, I, mean, I almost said it, dog. You know better, He knows exactly what I was going to say. <laughs> and it ends with you. I was about to say it, dog. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to know. Oh, what you, your, well, I'm about to five one off at you, dog. Uh, <laughs> All right, so what's the verdict? Would you oh, rather you know, yo, tiny oh, no. or speedy? No, no, no. It's, it's know. you. And he know what it is. It's you. Yeah. No, Shirley, I, I'm speedy. For damn sure, I'm speedy. <laughs> <laughs> uh. I ain't finna be tiny, well, though. I'm sorry. I'm not finna be tiny. <laughs> I'm gonna tell you what right now. I ain't even want so. I'm gonna have struggle. Oh, no. You, gotta you yeah, got to choose. You got to choose. Would you rather uh, is the yeah. name of the game? Oh, tiny man. or speedy? Yeah. I'm gonna let them go and call me <laughs> tiny. Yeah. yeah. Call me tiny. And surprise why, why? later. Yeah. Surprise. <laughs> <laughs> you know, well, squash that lie. rumor, huh? Squash yeah. it real quick. <laughs> Why they call you tiny? I don't know. I think they were talking about one of my teeth. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Would you rather live in a house with no doors, or would you rather live in a house with no TVs? I gotta have okay. them TVs. You just got. I, I just got to deal with them doors. Yeah. Wait, ain't, no ain't no doors. Ain't no, I, I gotta deal with no doors. Yeah. Well, you talking about somebody just walk up in my house? <laughs> While I'm watching TV? <laughs> Wait a minute. What about the bathroom? No yeah. door. No, I got to have a damn door. <laughs> Man, I watch TV on the computer, yeah. uh, phone yeah. or something. Phone, I got to have right. a door. No, and when I go yes. in that bathroom, I got to have a door. 
And you got to have a dough, too. To protect you. To protect this, this dough is not just for me. All right, Maybe I'm guys. going in here. Get off the flow. Oh, my God. I go in there without a dough. You got to go downstairs somewhere. That's what did you round eat? <laughs> Are you okay? Oh, That's man. today's round of Would You Rather. Thank you, guys. All right, coming up, it is our last break of the day, and we'll close out the show right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Between April 1971 and September 1972, six young black girls were snatched off the streets in Washington, D.C. It took four murders before the police finally realized that one person was responsible. I will admit the others when you catch me, if you can. Signed, Freeway Fan. This child was uh, laying on the side of the road. It appeared that she was probably either dragged out of the car or thrown out of the car. The person said, I murdered your daughter. The killer believed that he may have been seen by the mother. Did my mother see me? That guy is, he's out of sync with even the worst people. I thought that they would catch him. I thought it was just a matter of time. Is it possible that the killer is still alive? Listen to Freeway Phantom on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. All right, right before we get to the closing remarks, Steve, we got to talk about the 10th annual iHeartRadio Music Awards. It takes place tonight. It is going to be live from the Dolby Theater in Los Angeles with an all-star cast of performers and honorees, including performances by Lotto, Money Long, and Kelly Clarkson, with Pink and Taylor Swift receiving special awards. Four-time Grammy winner Lenny Kravitz will be hosting this year's iHeart Music Awards. That's worth the the price of admission right there uh Girl, and, come i on, know lenny. right <laughs> and it's free <laughs> lenny said he's thrilled and he intends to celebrate the best in music so check out again the 10th annual iheart radio music awards taking place tonight live from los angeles there on you fox. go mm-hmm. yep on fox Hosted- tonight Yes, hosted by Lenny Kravitz. LL Cool J Kravitz. making a special appearance too. Oh, yes, 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 LL. <laughs> Ladies, I, no. Cool. cool, we'll be yeah. watching. Mm-hmm. All right, Steve. Son, you take it away. Uh, you know, I uh, we were talking about this story earlier about Jonathan Majors. Oh yeah. And uh, him being arrested in New York uh, and accused of uh, attacking his. Uh, or this female assault and strangulation. Um, I can't tell people enough about the world we live in today. It just, for me, the way I was raised, I'm from a different time, I understand it. So I'm going to prep this with, I know that I'm older than most people listening and I'm older than most people that our fans, because I have fans from very young all the way to to senior citizens. So I do understand that what I'm saying comes from a different era of thinking, but it shouldn't be. I was just taught never to put my hands on a woman. I've been hit by women a few times in my life. Slap, stuff thrown at, I've never retaliated. Because I was told, you are too strong of a man to do that. Physically, you're too strong, and mentally, you're too strong. You're just too strong of a man. You don't do that. Just leave the house, go get in the car, take yourself a ride, calm yourself off, but don't ever put your hands on a woman. I I don't see why that's such a hard rule. I don't know what happened to it. I don't know what it is, but I do thank my father for that because my father, he put that in me and my brother's early on. I put it into my sons. And thank God to this point, none of my sons have ever laid their hands on a, on a, on a, on a young woman or a girl before. It's not hard, fellas. It's just who we are as men. You know, this ain't about feminism. This ain't, this ain't about chauvinism. This ain't about, you know, women's lib. This ain't about nothing. This is just about a simple thing of respect. Let me tell you something. The majority of your money when you're famous is spent protecting your brand. 
Well, how's that, Steve? Well, let me explain something to you. You can't be somewhere where people can just walk up and ring your doorbell because the brand gets risk when you when they have access to you. You can't just jump in Ubers and cabs because you're wealthy and famous because your risk, your brand is being put up at an un and just a risk. It's no need to do that. You can't not live in gated communities and with gates. You can't do that. And if you get even further up there, you got to do even more. Well, Steve, that don't make no sense. You can't be regular. You not. No, you can't be regular. It's a lot of you out there who are not famous. You can't be regular no more. You didn't, you've risen above it. If you're the first person in your college, in your family ever go to college, you ain't regular no more. You done broke the code. If you're the first one that's a supervisor in your family, you done broke the code. To whom much is given, much is required. And you're going to find out here they come because they know you did something different. You have to spend your money protecting your brand. If you make a certain amount of money, it's certain places you can't live. You can't be the only one there with money because now you're flashing. Oh, you showing out. Oh, Joe, oh, nah, so you going to buy all this furniture. Man, come on now. And y'all know what I'm talking about. Stop acting like you don't. Now, somebody going to email, Steve, that's why you can, you can stay in the hood. I ain't talking about the hood. I said, when you start making a certain amount of money, there's certain places you can't live. You call it what you want to call it. But it's all about growth. In order to grow, you got to go. That's a fact. This ain't no theory of mine. What has happened to this young man is he didn't realize. Now, I don't know the story he's talking about. He was in a taxi cab. You can't be in cabs no more, dog. You got to get a driver. You got to get somebody where if you're going to have private moments, they can remain private. Now, hitting a woman and strangling a woman, ain't nothing private about that, man. You have to pay if you did that. But, man, if you don't if you don't give them a pen to stick you with, they can't, they can't stick you. I'm telling you, man, when you can't get Uber. You can't do that. And when you got a brand, you got to protect your brand. You got to control your anger, man. You need to go somewhere. Get yourself together. Because I don't know, somebody told you never to hit a woman before. Now, I don't know if you, whatever she did, snatched your phone, read your text, whatever. Was Is it worth it now? Even the accusation alone is damn. Get your head, man. Control your anger. Protect your brand. Those are my closing remarks. Uh, see y'all tomorrow, God willing. Y'all have a great day. Talk to God today, y'all. He would absolutely love to hear from you. For all Steve Harvey contests, no purchase necessary. Void where prohibited. Participants must be legal U.S. residents at least 18 years old unless otherwise stated. For complete contest rules, visit SteveHarveyFM.com. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Between April 1971 and September 1972, six young black girls were snatched off the streets in Washington, D.C. This child was uh, laying on the side of the road. The person said, I murdered your daughter. The killer believed that he may have been seen. I will admit the others when you catch me if you can. Signed, Freeway Phantom. Listen to Freeway Phantom on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. What if I told you there was more to the story behind game-changing events? Get ready for my new podcast, That Moment with Damon John. Every Tuesday on the Black Effect Podcast Network, we'll jump into the personal stories of some of the most influential people on the planet, from business moguls and celebrities to athletes and artists. Join me every Tuesday for That Moment with Damon John on the Black Effect Podcast Network, the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or where wherever you go to get your podcasts. On Queen Charlotte, the official podcast, we're stepping behind the scenes and the drawing boards of this team to experience the life breathed into the Bridgerton prequel. Listen to the leaps executive producer and series director Tom Verica took to capture the feeling that puts that lump in your throat. And you've got to catch creator Shonda Rhimes. She's dropping gems, diamonds, and mics. You can listen to Queen Charlotte, the official podcast, every Thursday on the iHeartRadio app, 
Apple Podcasts, or anywhere you listen to your favorite shows. Hey, everybody, we are Ben Bolin, Matt Frederick, and Noel Brown of Stuff They Don't Want You to Know, the podcast on iHeartRadio. We're hosting an informative discussion in iHeartLand soon. Talking about our favorite teachers, the weird facts we learn in making the show, and how important it is to be curious about the world around us. Education is important, so join us as we chat all about it. Straight from State Farm Park in iHeartLand for a limited time, so don't miss it. We're going all in, so head to iHeartRadio.com slash iHeartLand to check it out.